Dear reader, I'm Tony, and this is Book Text. I have for you today my April 2020 reading wrap up. But first, our word of the day actually relates quite a bit to some of the books that I read this month. The word is hawkshaw. Hawkshaw. It is a noun. It is turn of the century slang, meaning a detective. It originated as a character, a detective character, in a British play in 1863, and then later became a general term for a detective. Of course, it's since left our language, but I think it should come back. Um, who is your favorite Hawkshaw? So I read nine books this month and one short story, which I'm going to include because it was so helpful for me in exploring different genres. So first, I listened to the audiobooks of um, books four and five in the Maisie Dobbs series by Jacqueline Winspear. These were titled Messenger of Truth and An Incomplete Revenge. I love these books. Jacqueline Winspear has a, a talent in fleshing out every character. The minor characters feel so real. Like they could just walk off the page and continue having aspirations and sorrows and their little character quirks. I love that about these books. I also really enjoy the feeling of attending a therapy session that I get when I'm listening to them. I have actually adopted Maisie's practice of meditation. I mean, I've meditated kind of sporadically in the past, but I now have a daily meditation practice that I was inspired to do by Maisie Dobbs. So books are starting to leak into other areas of my life. Also, the reader of these audiobooks, Orla Cassidy, is a goddess. She is the voice of Maisie Dobbs. She does such a phenomenal job. I also read Nine Coaches Waiting by Mary Stewart. This is one of my hauls from the library before it closed. So I finished this book this month. It is a gothic suspense or romance, or at least it's inspired by the gothic. It was not uh, written in the gothic time period, but it is definitely inspired by things like Jane Eyre, Wuthering Heights. Um, and I loved the creepy, spooky atmosphere that Mary Stewart created in this story. I wasn't as pleased with the how the romance ended up. I wanted uh, better, I think, in my opinion, for the main character. So that was slightly disappointing, but I really loved the book, the story. So I think I gave that four, three or four stars. I also read, this is another haul from the library, um, Grey Mask by Patricia Wentworth. And this is the first in the Miss Silver mystery series. And it was my first Patricia Wentworth. She is a master of ending chapters with a cliffhanger. <gasps> the suspense in this book, I really kept reading because you can't just end a chapter like that. You have to tell me what happens next. Um, Miss Silver herself didn't have much of a character. She didn't have much depth in this story. I actually really liked the other characters that were, they, they felt like they took more cent or center stage. And I liked their character a lot better. Um, so... I'm I'm kind of intrigued in seeing what else Miss Silver has to offer because I didn't get to know her very well in this first one. So that's Grey Mask by Patricia Wentworth. Definitely will read more by her. I also listened to the audiobook uh, Agatha Christie and not Agatha Christie, Agatha Raisin and the Dead Ringer by M. C. Beaton. And I don't think that the Agatha Raisin books are quite for me. This is the second one that I've read or, or listened to, and they just didn't really uh, jive with my my reading tastes. So it you know didn't really stick with me. I found myself speeding up the audio so that it would end faster and I could get back to a Maisie Dobbs story, whatever I was listening to next. So I did listen to Agatha Raisin and the Dead Ringer. I also finished The Watchmaker of Filigree Street by Natasha Pulley. This is my first Natasha Pulley, which makes sense because it was her first book as well. It is kind of Victorian classic inspired, but also kind of magical realism, science fiction, maybe fantasy. Not entirely sure how I would classify this 
um, genre. Uh, I loved the character of Grace. She was so interesting. She was a scientifically, academically minded woman uh, in a time when women could not uh, attend the Oxford Library without a male escort helping them in. Uh, I don't know if they weren't trusted or what. And Virginia Woolf wrote about this in her essay novella, um, A Room of One's Own, where she couldn't walk into the library at Oxford. And so that grace was really interesting to me. I also loved the writing style. You could totally picture the scenes um, that Natasha Pulley is describing. So descriptive, so vivid. Um, I thought Grace's story could end up better. I, the focus was on the other characters. And to be fair, they were more kind of the main characters. And I wanted more from Grace. I thought she kind of got um, a short shrift there at the end. But this is The Watchmaker, Watchmaker of Filigree Street, and I will definitely read more by Natasha Pulley. I also read, this is actually was a book that I owned. I, I'm trying to read the books that I own because I own a lot. Um, but I'm also <laughs> write, uh, reading through my library hall, and I'm listening to a lot of audiobooks from the library. So I didn't get to a ton of books that I owned this month, but I did read... So Many Books, So Little Time, A Year of Passionate Reading. This is by Sarah Nelson. I didn't know anything about her or this book before I began reading it, except that it was a book about books, a book about reading. And I am a sucker for books about books. I have a whole shelf just dedicated to that theme. I love books about books. And uh, this was a good um, addition to my shelf it is enjoyable, it was relatable. She talks about when she could read really well and when she was in a reading rut, and that it's so relatable, isn't it? So I recommend um, so many books, so little time. If anything, for, for the uh, recognizing yourself in this book, you will feel less alone. I also, the other book that I read from my own shelves is The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. I read this one for the Wine and Cheese Reading Social earlier this month. Um, it's a quick story. It um, is a series of vignettes about the harsh reality of living as a minority in the United States. And it is to told through the eyes of a Latina teenager kind of coming of age. Really hard topics, a little bit magical. I, I wasn't quite sure uh, what was real and what the, the narrator was kind of elaborating on. I have a couple other Sandra Cisneros books on my shelves, and I am definitely adding them to my, my TBR because I want to, to read more by her. Okay, those are my... Oh I, oh, I also listened to the audiobook of My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. This is another gothic tale, kind of gothic-inspired, right? Mimicking Victorian-era suspense stories, a little bit of a murder mystery... And I loved every second of this story. Oh, the I just wanted to reach into the book and smack the main character in the face. He, I mean, this is the dangers of uh, when, when men imagine that women are flirting with them or imagine that women uh, like them more than they do. It was so obvious and it, that things weren't going the way that the narrator thought they were. I love this one. I think I liked that one better than Nine Coaches Waiting, which was a similar story. This one felt a little more real. That one was a little bit more of a fairy tale esque. Um, and then the short story that I read was on Tor.com, and it is called Those Who Watch by Ruthanna Emrys. This is a story that is set in the Lovecraftian universe, so inspired by um, H.P. Lovecraft's kind of cosmic horror stories. And it is about a small college library in the southern United States where dark and creepy things are happening in the stacks. So I loved the horrific atmosphere. I, I kind of enjoy horror stories, and I specifically looked for a Lovecraftian horror to read because it's just so much more interesting. It's so cre crazy, creepy. I mean, there's I, I can't think of the, the right word for it but very disturbing. And I also loved 
reading about kind of mundane research procedures that you would do in a library being applied to these kind of cosmic horror topics. That was really enjoyable for me. So I will definitely look into Ruth Anna Emrys's novels. She has some uh, similar Lovecraftian inspired novels I'm going to uh, try to get my hands on. I don't know uh, when, when, when the quarantine is up, perhaps. So those are my nine books and one short story. What did you read in April? Tell me about it in the comments. And remember, there's always another book.